Hi Fiona here from Reads and Eats. I'm here today to do my August wrap up. I've had a good month. I managed to read six books which I'm really pleased with so let's just get into there. The first one was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. My friend Amanda over at Amanda Reads, I'll link her channel down below. Um, she's been getting at me for ages and going, oh come on read it, read it, read it. So I've finally done it and I'm really glad I did. Thanks Amanda, it was great and I look forward to reading the rest of them. The premise of this book, if you haven't read it, is that Tessa is a 16 year old girl who lives in New York with her aunt. But her aunt dies and she's got no one else left in the world apart from her brother Nate who lives in London. He sends her a letter with a first class um, ship a, a ticket for a boat to come over to London, which she does. He doesn't meet her at the dock, but has sent two other people to meet her instead. With And there's a letter from him, so she thinks it is from him. She then ends up in this house with these two women. And I'm just going to say they're not very nice to her. She escapes with help from other people. And the story is then of her living with these other people and helping them to, how can I put this, rid the world of a nasty person. But at the same time, they're helping her look for her brother and hopefully rescuing him. Tessa, the main character, is lovely. I think her character was really well written and, you know, you feel for her, you want the best for her, you want everything to work out as she wants them to work out. She then, You then have other characters like Will who is a shadow hunter and he is lovely, he's really nice. He will quote Shakespeare and everything else to you, he is really nice but he has this gruff side but I think that's him just hiding something and you don't know what he's hiding but hopefully we'll find out in the next book. You then have Jem who is lovely. I I think his character is lovely. is really, really nice. Um, he has problems as well, but that's everybody's problems, so it's okay. Then there's Henry, who to me is like your mad professor, who likes to take things and put, take them apart, put them back together again, but they'll be a bit added zoosh to them. Um, think maybe Mr. Weasley, and you've kind of got the idea. Um, his wife, who runs the institute that um, Tessa lives in, is really nice, very caring and wants to help as much as she can. So yes, yeah, a really good book and I look forward to reading the next one. I then also read Nora Roberts' The Collector. This was really good. The premise is a lady is a house sitter. And on one of her house sitting jobs, she watches somebody fall out of a window but the big question is were they did they fall or were they pushed and on speaking to the police as she because she dialed 911 she discovers that not only was the lady murdered but also the other person in the house was murdered but the police seem to think that the person the other person that's in the house that is also dead was the one doing the murdering but the brother of the person in the house that the police think is doing the murdering doesn't believe them. So the house sitter and the brother get together to try and solve the murders and it's to do with greed, to do with being disillusioned about who you are or your family are. Um, there's also romance there not only for the two main characters but also for the two main characters best friends which is really really good and yes all in all a brilliant book that takes you into the world of Fabergé and antiques and antique collectors and things so again very very good. Next one was Sapphire Blue by Kirsten Gear. this is the second in the Ruby Red trilogy I didn't enjoy this one as much as Ruby Red um, although it is nice to get back in to see what happens to Gwen and Gideon. Um, you didn't really get very many answers this time. You were actually left with more questions than answers. Hopefully the final book in this trilogy will answer all the questions that have already be, that have been asked. Um, Gwen, I like the character. I think she is really nice, very well portrayed. Um, maybe still slightly naive. <clears throat> Gideon... I'm not sure about him. I really don't know. I don't know whether he's a nice guy, a good guy or a bad guy. 
the Gwen's best friend I think is brilliant. I love the gargoyle. The gargoyle that comes to life is fabulous. He is so funny and helpful and he just adds humour to it which is really really good. So I look forward to reading the third one in the trilogy and hopefully I will get the answers I seek. I also read Hope in a Bally Shoe by Michaela and Elaine de Prince. This has to be one of the best memoirs I've ever read. It was brilliant. Um, premise of the book is that Michaela de Prince was an orphaned girl in Sierra Leone. She was a member of an orphanage and a number of the children from the orphanage were adopted by American families. And this is the story of Michaela and her adoptive family and her adoptive um, sisters as well because the family also adopted another wee girl from the same orphanage who and Michaela and this girl were best friends and so they adopted them as sisters which is lovely and it's the story of their coming to America and all the things that have happened to them since coming to America but you also get the background of what was going on in Sierra Leone when they were put into the orphanage etc and it's from really horrible beginnings something absolutely beautiful has happened and I have to say hats off to the De Prince family for adopting these young girls um, when they did considering what they've gone through in their own lives in the family life I think you know it's just a fantastic fantastic thing to do and one of these days, if I'm lucky enough, I would love to see Michaela de Prince dance. I think that would just top this book off completely. Then I read We Are Completely Beside, Ourse or Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. This book I found really interesting, if not rather disturbing, I have to say. Um, premise is a young girl thinks she's being sent to her grandparents and when she comes back from being with her grandparents she discovers her sister has gone and the story is told from her perspective now as a college student and it tells you of all the things that she has experienced and what she feels about her life grow as she grew up as a young child now without her sister and the effect that this had on herself and her parents and her brother there is a twist that I didn't even see coming. I was like, oh my gosh. And that is the disturbing part. The twist I found, I did find disturbing. I was like, oh, I don't know that I agree with this. I really don't know that I agree with what was happening. But I'm going to leave it for you guys to decide for yourselves when you read the book what you think of it. It's worth a read, but it'll make you think. And the final book I read, I'm going to have to look at my wee, my wee book diary was A Girl's Guide to Witchcraft by Mindy Klasky. This one I got from BookBub as a free book. Um, yes, I enjoyed it. Whether I will read any more in the series, I'm not sure. The story is a lady who works for the Peabody Library and she's down on her luck, broke, etc. And the library are having to cut costs. So to do so, they're cutting her wages, but in, but because of that, and she can't afford her flat, they let her move into a cottage in the library grounds. In said cottage in the cellar, she finds all these books, etc. And one night, she opens a book, reads something out of it, and lo and behold, the cat that was on the sort of the lectern that this book was on comes to life as a man, and she has witch powers that she didn't know she had and the story is of her learning in some ways about her powers as a witch being helped and a bit and sometimes hindered by her cat man and the, the warder that's supposed to come and help her there's a kind of romance there that i don't know is going to work and she's also been in love with um this lecturer at the university for so long and she does a, a love spell but it doesn't work on him it works on somebody else and it's just the story of all of that and does she get the lecture does she not get the lecturer what happens with that where has she got these witch powers from um it's also to do with her reconnecting with her mother who she thought she was dead and it was interesting 
and I liked it but I'm not raving about it. Well that's all I've read for this month as you can see six which was I was really pleased about. Please let me know down below if you've read any of the books I've mentioned and what you thought about them. Also please give me any recommendations that you think of books I would like to read and subscribe if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down and I will hopefully see you soon with another video. Thank you for watching, bye!